Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Scott, and today we're painting Angron, the Primarch of the World Eaters. This has been a really fun model, and it took me quite a while to paint it. But let's go ahead and dive into how I painted this model. To get this model ready for painting, I've primed it using Ultra Matte Black Paint Plus Primer from Rust-Oleum, but you could use any black primer that you want. The first thing we're going to do on this project is we're going to take Abaddon Black and we're going to use this to paint the membrane of the wings. Now we're using this black instead of just leaving it with the primer color because this has a better texture and a better finish than the primer does. Once we've applied that color, we're going to take Skaven Blight Dinge and we're going to dry brush this heavily over the wing membranes. And this should catch all of those raised surfaces and wrinkles in the membrane. Next we're going to take Dark Reaper and we're going to dry brush this but more lightly and we're focusing on having this be the heaviest towards the base of the wing membrane. With the wing membrane done, it's time to work on the skin of the model. We're going to base all of the skin using corn red. Once we've finished applying that red base color, we're going to take Karaberg Crimson and we're going to heavily wash this over all of the skin. Once that shade is dried, we're going to take Mephiston Red and we're going to use this to highlight all of the raised ridges and all the definition in the muscle. We're going to start working on the armor panels of the model. We're going to base them all using Balthazar Gold. Now we're doing this at this stage to prevent ourselves from having to repaint too much of the more detailed highlighting on the skin because we're going to be doing a lot of dry brushing with the armor. Once that base color is in place, we're going to take Agrax Earthshade and we're going to do a heavy wash of this over all of the copper armor. Once that shade is dried, we're going to take Copper from Pro Acryl and we're going to dry brush this fairly heavily over all of the armor. Our next step is to take Gehenna's Gold, and we're going to use this to paint all of the trim on all of the armor panels on the model. Once again, we're going to bring back Agrax Earthshade, and we're going to use this to shade all of the gold trim on the armor. Our next step is to take Psychorax Bronze, we're going to dry brush this on the trim of the armor panels. Be careful not to get this on the main copper color of the armor panels though. Now we're going to take Warplock Bronze and we're going to use this to paint the planets that are on all of the World Eater symbols across the model. Now we're going to take Nihilic Oxide and we're going to use this to give the appearance of oxidation on the planets that are in the World Leader symbol. This function is very similar to a shade, but we're only trying to paint this in the recesses of the model. Once that technical paint is dried, we're going to take Biltan Green and we're going to put this just in a couple select spots where we want to kind of discolor the oxidation just to kind of draw more attention to the symbol. Now that we're happy with the armor, we're going to take Skaven Blight Dinge and we're going to use this color to pick out all of the horns and spikes and claws that appear across the model. Now we're going to shade everything we painted in the previous step using Contrast Basiliconum Gray. And when you do this, just be careful not to get this on the surrounding colors. Once that shade is dried, we're going to highlight the ridges of all the spikes, teeth, and horns using Dawnstone. Stone. 
Now we're going to do an additional layer of highlighting, this time using Karak Stone, and we're going finer than we did with the previous highlight. At this point, we're ready to move back to working on the skin. We're going to take Squig Orange, and we're going to do an additional layer of highlighting on the muscles of the model. And this color looks a little bit weird at first, but just trust me, it'll look better after we do the next step. After we've finished highlighting all of the skin on the model, we're going to take Reikland Flesh Shade, and we're going to do two to three thin coats of this over all of the skin on the model. This helps blend the orange and reds together into one fluid-looking skin tone. At this point, we're done with the skins. We're going to start working on all the cloth and leather on the model. We're going to use Abaddon Black as the base color for all of these details. Next, we're going to highlight all of the black details on the model using Dark Reaper. Our next step is to take Lead Belcher, and we're going to use this to paint the butcher's nails on the head of the model, as well as any other metallic details, spikes, or trim that we want to pick out in this color. We will shade all of the Lead Belcher details on the model using Contrast Basiliconum Gray. And just don't go too heavy here, because we don't want to dole this down too much. Once that contrast paint is dried, we're going to take Iron Breaker, and we're going to use this as our highlight color for all of the Lead Belcher metallic parts of the model. We're going to dry brush this on larger areas like the weapons, and then we're going to manually highlight this on the smaller details. Now that we're done with that, we're going to take Ushab Debone, and we're going to use this as the base color for all of these skulls, both on the model and on the base plate. Once we're happy with that cream colored base, we're going to take Contrast Skeleton Horde and we're going to use this as the wash on all of the skulls. After we've allowed that contrast paint to dry, we're going to take Screaming Skull and we're going to use this to highlight all of the curvy raised surfaces of the skulls. With the skulls all done, we're going to pick out the handle of the weapons as well as the tongue on the model, and we're going to use Baraknar Burgundy as the base color for these details. We're going to shade the handles of the weapon as well as the tongue of the model using Karaburg Crimson. You can go as heavy as you'd like with this shade, it won't make too much of a difference in the end. Once we've allowed that shade to dry, we're going to take Screamer Pink and use this to highlight the edges of the handle wraps on the weapons, as well as the tongue of the model. The last thing we're going to work on with this model is the glow on his demon sword. So we're going to take Averlin Sunset, we're going to paint this over all the skulls and any of the cracks that appear in his sword. We're going to shade the yellow on the sword using Cassandora Yellow, and you want to go nice and heavy with this so you get a good orange tint in the deeper recesses of the blade. Finally, we're going to take Squig Orange, and we're going to use this to highlight the most raised ridges of the skulls and the cracks on the sword. And with that, we finished painting Angron. Thank you so much for watching this video today. I really hope you've enjoyed it. I know I certainly enjoyed making it. If you did enjoy the video, go ahead and like it. And then subscribe to my channel so you see future videos that I make. I'd like to give a special shout out to my channel members that make videos like this possible. If you would like to become a channel member, hit the join button below this video and you can gain access to exclusive perks such as a members only discord where you can talk directly with me whenever you'd like. As always, have an amazing day and we'll catch you in the next one.